folks. This is our fifth ever episode of the Child Safety Resource. Uh, we, we're kind of doing it on the fly here in the office because uh, Michael here is visiting from Michigan and he's an ISR instructor and a super interesting dude with a really cool uh, history and how he got into ISR is interesting and what he's doing now with the business is really interesting. And so I had him captured here for a little bit, so I wanted to, to get him on and, uh, and see what he had to say. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. All the way from Michigan. All the way from Michigan. And your arms aren't tired? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're here for the Live Like Jake 5K. That's correct. We yeah. had a, um, uh, Infant Swimming Resource had a recertification in the last couple of days. Okay. So I, That's cool. They time it at the same time. That they, makes sense. Yeah. They have one right before and then right after. So it brings more instructors in That's nice. able to do the recertification and then, of course, participate in the amazing... Uh, live like Jake Grace mm -hmm. with Carrie and all the uh, amazing stuff and work that she has done. And you told me before this is your second time doing it, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. And what do you think what was the first time? What was your favorite part of it? The inspiration you get from hearing the stories mm -hmm. of uh, Carrie's story and the other parents who have lost a child uh, to drowning and just the resolve that it gets you to go out and find the next student to right. teach, to save themselves, heaven forbid they ever reach the pool sure. alone. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, and I've heard um, Casey, who was actually on the show a couple days yes. ago, who you saw, um, he's been to the race a couple times. Um, he's running in it tomorrow. Yes. And he's got a little booth there. He'll see him. Uh, he, he said the same thing. That the stories are just, you know, I mean, they're, they're heart-wrenching, obviously, but they also kind of fuel you, give you the fuel for the resolve to, to move forward. They do, they inspire, yeah. greatly inspire. Absolutely, to do the work you do. You know, you kind of, it's easy to get bogged down in employees and financial in statements day -to -day, and taxes yes, and, exactly. you know, all the mechanics of running a business and you, you can forget that the reason you do it is to save lives. That's you know, right. It is. Uh, we try not to, but it's, I mean, it's hard, you know, absolutely. So, um, and you told me a little bit already, so you have to repeat yourself. Sure. But, uh, you know, what is your kind of superhero origin story? How did you get started? How did you get into business? Well, right out of college, I started with Walmart, and I was a Walmart store manager for 11 and a half years. Um, I left all that glitz and glamour behind, like I said, and started a merchandising company where I, uh, I have teams that go out into retail stores and uh, do resets on the shelf. Most of them are big, heavy, dirty work that, right. you know, not a lot of people like to do. Uh, that was going really well in 2004 i started that and by 2008 i was really bored because i was doing the financials mm -hmm. and the big customer service things but yeah. i had some other people running the business and um all the fun stuff that got you in, it in the first place yes you weren't doing that anymore. no yeah. exactly so uh i wanted to do something with more meaning wanted to do something that i can get passionate about mm -hmm. i was actually be going to become a massage therapist okay I have a childhood friend who is a massage therapist so he does it uh like a little side job where he, right. you know, he makes money, helps people heal. And, yeah. Um, I saw the Miles video, the little boy with the blue cotton jumper that falls into the pool and rolls back to float. Right. That went viral back in 07. Right. Great video. Great video. And uh, I don't think they had a fence. Which no, they didn't. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So the, um, that and having my uh, youngest was two years old at the time. Mm -hmm. So I said, I had... I have to get her in these lessons. I have a quarter acre pond in my backyard. There's no fence around the pond. It's right. big and it's 10 yards from my back door. So uh, I researched and there was an instructor that was three hours away. So I realized with the structure of ISR lessons, I was unable to do that. Right, so you explain that. What is the structure of ISR lessons? It's, it's 10 minutes per day, right? We do five days a week Yep. Uh, for 10 minutes a day. Um, and it's usually four to six weeks. We really go at the pace of the child okay. and go as fast as the uh, child will let us go. So once I saw there were no instructors, I kind of talked to my wife and we researched it. And um, actually the amount to become an ISR instructor then in 2008 was the exact same to the penny as it was to become a massage therapist for oh, the wow. school that already picked out. So the choice is easy. There was yeah, uh, absolutely. There's a massage therapist on every corner. Sure. I'm a guy, so that's kind of icky right. to some people, right? Sure, it is. <laughs> and, uh, I prefer getting massaged by a woman. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, so. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. And so it really was an easy choice. The, um, you know, my first year teaching, mm -hmm. the entire year I taught 30 students. Okay. Uh, the last session I just finished up, just one session I had 42 gotcha. this year. So after 11 years doing it, um, the business has grown. 
Uh, in 2011, I became a master instructor. Okay. So that means I get to teach new instructors how to do this. I've taught 23 instructors. That's really cool. So they're all out there teaching. Um, are they lo mostly located near Michigan, or are they all over? They're all over. Um, California and... Uh, do they come into you? Texas. And, um, you fly no, out to them? Yeah, I went out to, yeah, I went okay. out to California. I taught three out there. I taught four in Texas. Okay. Um, the rest have come to me. Gotcha. I guess. Uh, oh, I taught two in Pittsburgh. I got to teach my sisters. That's cool. My two older sisters. So do they do it, or they just want they, to know? No, they do. Yeah, they're ISR That's instructors awesome. in Pittsburgh. Now, I, I trained them. They've been teaching for one year. So last year, at this time, I was there. Uh, getting to boss my little, my big sisters around, getting revenge for all those years they used to pick <laughs> on me. It was a lot of fun. That's really that was cool. A great training. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What a neat thing. So I've taught about right around a thousand students now. Wow. So it's been a great ride. I love it. Every day I can't wait to go to work. Absolutely. Um, I tell people I get a ten minute puzzle. Right. I, I get a puzzle and I have ten minutes to get as far along as the puzzle as I can, and then I get a new puzzle. Right. And then a I get to work on that puzzle again tomorrow for right. 10 minutes. And, uh, so it's very stimulating. Uh, uh, until you solve it after the end of 30 days. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll come back in six months or a year. For, right. Refresher. Uh, yeah. yeah. As they grow and get bigger, their body changes. Sure. So they need to know how to manage the water with their new body. Gotcha. So explain to folks who don't know what ISR is. And if it's Swimming Resource is a program that teaches kids as young as six months old uh, how to survive in the water. So really we're teaching yeah. them how to come up to float and maintain a float. Once we are about a year, so really walking, then we can teach a swim, float, swim sequence. If the child gets to the water and falls in, they know how to roll back and float, rest and breathe, turn and swim for about four seconds, roll back and float again, rest and breathe, and continue that swim, float, swim sequence so they can reach a point of safety and get themselves out of the water. If they're in a place where they can't get to the edge, maybe the coping's too high sure. or we can't uh, swim against the current, then we're just eventually rolling floating. back and floating and maintaining the float. Uh, I think it's 86% of children that fall in the water are fully dressed, yeah. uh, clothed at the time. If your child has their swimsuit on, you're probably watching them because yeah. you know you're going to be around the water. It's that time that they don't Hopefully. have their swimsuit yeah. on. Exactly. Hopefully. Well, Good parenting. Well, you know, no, I get, it happens you know, like absolutely. Parents, a lot of parties, you know, pool, you hear a lot of kids drowning at pool parties. You know, where they, you know, took the water wings off and mm -hmm. they shouldn't have in the first place, got them dried off, you know, went inside to grab a towel or something. Here, here's a great yeah. rule to follow. If, if you're going to be by a pool, if your child is going to be by a pool, if there's a pool party, you go or you say no. That's the rule. As a parent, nobody's going to watch your child like you watch your child. Absolutely. Absolutely nobody. We talked about water watchers yesterday. We yeah, had a great program. Uh, Alyssa McGroom, um, I may be saying Magrum, maybe I may be saying that wrong. Um, and she's with Collins Hope, which is an amazing organization. And she has the Water Guardian. Um, yeah. the, the, same thing, water watchers, but life. Like, yeah, you know, lanyard. And, lanyard or yeah. wristband or something. And, you know, change every 10 to 15 minutes. Right. You can watch the bull for 10 or 15 minutes Absolutely. and not be you distracted. Know, That's I fine. Mean, when you have to watch the bull for two hours. That's, and the child is sitting on the steps with a cup of water, right? Like this, and like the, you know, the child is fascinated by sure, this yeah. water displacement, <laughs> yeah. right? As adults, our head, eyes are rolled back in yeah. our head. Yeah. You can't watch that. No, you can't. And I mean, even professional lifeguards, That's true. because um, science has proven that you can only your eyes can only look at something for so long before they start to glaze over. You get distracted. You know, even professional lifeguards can only do it for 20, 30 minutes. So incredible. You can probably do ten fifteen. You right. Know, yeah. Before you max out, you red and line. then you're like here. Yeah, give it to somebody drink, else. Right. <laughs> exactly. So it's good uh, to you know to switch off, um, just because you want to get back to the party. But but more importantly, because you can't do it for more Some, than ten fifteen. Well, minutes. yeah. And when every you think everybody is watching the pool, that that's means when nobody nobody's is. watching the pool. Yeah. That's right. There's a, a psychological phenomenon called diffusion of responsibility, where the more people you think are doing something, the less you feel responsible to have to do it. So if everybody's around the pool, then you figure grandma, Auntie Jane, my husband, right. you know, everybody else is doing it. I'm good. I don't have to. You know, it kind of takes the weight off of you. But if you're alone, that's why a when lot of kids drown um, when there's a party. But less kids drown if just mom is there with the kids. You know, because she herself. knows she has to. She, knows she has to look. For you know, there's no confusion. Yeah. There's no uh, there's no communication errors. Um, but you're right. Most kids drown with their clothes on. You know. Um, so it, really, when we We've, we find it extremely important to teach that child in that environment that they have a potentially could be in. Sure. I want their first time to, in, to be in the water with clothes on with me. 
right. so that if we need to uh, tweak a movement or change a behavior in the water, I could teach that. Right, and just the comfort opposed, level too, right? Yes, as opposed to them just getting in and trying to figure it out on the fly. Right. You know, you don't want your three-year-old to figure out how to float on the fly. R absolutely not. That's, yeah. It would, they, I mean, it's not going to work. It, well, no, it's hard to learn how to do anything on the fly. That's right. Especially when you're panicked. Especially you're, when you don't have an opportunity to breathe. Yeah, yeah that makes it harder. You know? <laughs> it makes it a lot harder, and you have a lot less time to learn it. Sure, absolutely. Um, so you've been doing this for how long now? It's my 11th year teaching. That's really cool. And you were saying um, earlier, we were talking, that uh, so you have staff now who does the bulk of the training for regular students, right? Well, I do. Well, I, I still do the bulk of the okay. training. For the, but I um, have started hiring new instructors Okay. Uh, as hourly employees, so... Mm -hmm. I have a lot of the marketing already set up. I have the system set up to people already coming to my website. They're already coming to my email, my phone number. So uh, we get all those, and then we direct those students to the pools we schedule for the instructors. So okay. the instructors give us what their availability is, when they want to teach, and we fill up their schedule as much as we can. Gotcha. But you were saying you'd like to focus now more on like special needs children. I do. The goal yeah. is... You personally. I yes. Mean, yeah. the, the goal for me is to teach exclusively special needs students. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's my passion. It's amazing. And, and what have you found is different about teaching a special needs student versus... You know... Or everything? I mean... No, actually... Or nothing, you know, or somewhere Actually, recently. nothing. The hard part, or I guess the tricky part, not hard, is the... Any, any questions or no? Okay. The... Uh, oh, Miranda. oh, Miranda's there. Nice. <laughs> Go ahead. The tricky part is... To go with the pace of the student. Okay. And sometimes a special needs student needs attention at something you might not consider, or you okay. might not, if you didn't have a lot of experience teaching, you might not notice. Um, but honestly, I, to this date, any special needs student, and that's uh, autism and Down syndrome and limb, limb difference, I've taught a student who's blind. Mm -hmm. I have a student on my schedule when I get back who's uh, deaf. Oh, wow. And um, How's your sign language? Uh, I, yeah, very limited. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So, but the, uh, I have not had one go past six weeks yet. They've okay. all learned in the same amount of time as any other student will learn. It's just looking and seeing behaviors mm -hmm. and determining what to do next with that child. I get, every child's different, whether we have special needs or not, mm -hmm. and we cater, always cater our uh, ISR lesson to the child, and that really helps that child learn at their pace as opposed to our curriculum. Right. Which our curriculum is, what is the child doing? Let's make a decision what to do next. Absolutely. So how, how does, if one wanted to get ISR, what would they do? How much does it cost? Kind of what's the... Uh, you would go to isrcareers.com. Okay. Or if you wanted to... No, but yeah, both. Why not? Okay. So, yeah, if, if you, you wanted want... to be an instructor. Yeah, that's okay, that first. So why not? An instructor is uh, isrcareers.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last I knew, I think it's about 8000 okay. to become an instructor. Mm -hmm. Um if you wanted uh, your child to have the and, and swimming so resource you guys are at isrcareers.com, fill out the website. Obviously, they have you in for a lot of training, right? There's a whole They do. There's sort of uh, about a seven-week curriculum. Okay. Um, when I first became an instructor, I thought, okay, great. I'm going to go learn how to become a swim instructor. Right. It really has nothing to do with swimming and everything to do with behavioral psychology and learning how children learn. Oh, wow. Children learn by sensory motor learning. They learn by doing. Mm -hmm. They learn by actively engaging their environment. So we have to allow them to do that safely in the water and take them through the process of learning to roll back and float and swim and kick and move your arms and the timing of the swim and the float. And, uh, so it's extremely interesting process yeah. that we teach by and it's very engaging and um, it's actually changed my home life really? and, and how I raise my children. How so? Uh, if I can figure out what the stimulus for a behavior is, Mm -hmm. I can pre present the stimulus, allow the child, my daughter, to do whatever it is I wanted them to do, and then I could reinforce it okay. without forcing my child. So, um, you know, we still have family things that, of that happen. Yeah. And, you know, no, you're going to go clean your room whether right. you want to or not. Mm -hmm. But the example is, how do you get a three-year-old to eat her dinner? Right. If she don't want to eat, she's not eating. Sure. <laughs> you know, there's, that's yeah. child abuse, me trying to, yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to put the food in her mouth. So yeah. you can't. It's but, not but, something that but, I could force like, her to but you, do. But you need her to eat because if she dies, it's your fault. Well, she's yeah. going to eat when she's hungry. Yeah. She's not going to die, but <laughs> right. she's going to be cranky in two hours because she's hungry sure. and it's bedtime. Right. So, okay, take one bite of your food and you could be done. Mm -hmm. 
Well, of course, she's going to take one bite of her food because she wants to be nice. So she right. takes a bite of food. I jump up and do the most ridiculous happy dance you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> right. Sit back down, look across the table at my wife and say, so how was your day, dear? Like nothing ever happened. And she's like, well, why'd you do that for, Dad? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to take another bite of food? Right. She takes another bite of food. I get up and reinforce it. Right. So I provided the stimulus now with like one bite. Right. The reinforcer is Dad acts like an idiot and dances right. around the kitchen. Right. So she takes a bite. Pretty soon, the plate of food's gone. Right. So she ate it. I didn't get a bite to eat that day. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work at it, though. I did. Yeah. I think at one point I hurt myself because I did a somersault nice. on the hardwood floors. Which... Yeah. <laughs> so the next day, she won't eat. Oh, no, no. Take one bite. She takes a bite. Right. I do a happy dance. She takes another bite. Nothing. Right. Dad, why don't you do a happy dance? I don't know what you're talking about. Take right. another bite. She right. takes a bite. I do it. So then I slowly lean myself out. Right. And pretty soon she's eating her dinner, and then I do it once every week, right. and then once every other month, yeah. and then you don't have to do it anymore. She's just eating her dinner without the struggle of, eat your dinner, I don't want to eat my dinner, to right. cry, and then my wife's looking at me because I'm getting mad, and then yeah. she's getting mad, and then it's just a miserable evening at right. home with the family. Yeah. Exactly. That's really cool. But that is how we teach ISR lessons. We mm-hmm. set the environment up for the child to do something. Right. As the instructor, we reinforce it then we are more likely to get that behavior again, and that's how we teach. That's perfect. I like it. it. It's, it's how children learn. So it's, it makes yeah. a lot of sense, you know, absolutely. And so what if a parent wanted to get lessons for their child? Infantswim.com, right? and you can type in your zip code, and the uh, closest instructor will pop up. I think the setting on the website is 20 to 30 miles, so when you type in your zip code, put in a higher number of miles if you can't find one. Right. Find an instructor, even if it's 60 or 70 miles, contact the instructor, maybe they'll come to you. And if you wanted to leave some advice for parents to be safe around the pool, what would you tell them? Layers of supervision, always. Watch your child. There should be alarms on the back doors and the back windows. There should be a barrier, a lifesaver pool fence, in between the house and the pool. Mm The last line of defense is giving your child the ability to know what to do when they're in that situation. Mm -hmm. You might have a pool, but the pond you're visiting at the park doesn't have a fence around it. The lake you're going to visit, the neighbors that you go visit might not have a fence around their pool. So um, the more layers you can set up, the more redundancy you can have, the less chance of failure of all of those. If your only thing you have is ISR lessons, if that happens to fell for some reason because the water's too cold or the you know child the child bumped their head as they right, yeah, went into sure. the water, the, you you go on chance. Right. If you have five or six layers, what are the chances of five or six layers breaking down? Yeah. The more yeah, layers you have, the, 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 the closer you get to a fail-safe system. Exactly. Where you can't have a perfect fail-safe system, Never. but the closer you get. Right? Exactly. And what's nice about ISR or swim instruction in general is you protect the child, not the water. Exactly. You know, which I always thought was good. I've heard the phrase, prepare the child for the path, not the path for the child. Makes sense. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then CPR, right? I always like to tell people. Absolutely. It's not only a layer of protection that you're doing it afterwards, but, you know, in the event something happens, I mean, parents you should know, know CPR. That's Anyways. right. Yeah, perfect. Well, I don't want to make it sweat out here because it is super hot in this room. Really? Yeah, and it's Florida. <laughs> and, and he's from Michigan. I haven't noticed. Yeah, it's from, he's from Michigan, which means he's melting. Why do I have to chew my air? Yeah. Here? It's humid. Yeah. I, I, I'm running a race tomorrow morning. Yeah, you, I don't know why you are. That's a terrible I'm idea. walking or jogging. Or yeah. Race. I mean, it's not bad for me. I'm used to it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't melted into the, my black couch. Yeah, right. Which is it's, terrible. Thanks. Good deal, man. Appreciate well, thank you so much. It was you're, really you're great. Really, thank you for having me. This is fantastic. Great to meet you. Awesome. You too. Thank right. you. Thanks, guys.